This is Pastor Lom here, Raising Warriors for Christ. This is what we do. You know, today in our devotional, we were looking at Mark 16, verse 17. You know, I just want to read briefly Mark 16, 17. I'm reading from the NIV version. You know, Mark is a, is a brilliant author. You know, we thank God for the book of Mark. Uh, you know, there are a lot of things that we, we get from, 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 from Mark. You know, theologians believe that Matthew and Luke wrote from, from Mark, that Mark was the gospel that the others actually filled in the gaps from. You know, Mark is uh, precise and Mark doesn't really waste time. He dives into, you know, the, the, the nitty gritty of the gospel. Now, in Mark 16, uh, where we were writing our gospel today, you know, writing our devotional today, he says, he said to them, go into all the world and preach the good news. You know, I want you to take note what they were to preach. They were to preach the good news. So I was talking about the good news that, you know, the church and the world, they are not acquainted to the good news. They have not come to the revelation of the good news that we can go as ministers of the gospel and tell sinners that, listen, Jesus died for you. You need to give your life to Jesus. You know, when you give your life to Jesus, all is going to be well. The moment that sinner gives his life to Jesus, then we introduce them to behavioral modification. We start telling them that if you don't tithe, you are going to be in trouble. If you don't do A, B, C, D, E, stop. If you don't stop adultery, if you don't stop smoking, if you continue being a drunkard, you know, continue smoking drugs, doing drugs, then, you know, God is not pleased with you. Yet, the same sinner, we told them that Jesus died for you. He hung on the cross for you. He took away your sins. But the moment they are in the church is behavioral modification. That is not the gospel. You see, the good news is what Jesus Christ did at the cross. That is the gospel. You see, Jesus at the cross, he took away our sins. He took away our sins. He paid the price. The problem really is not a sin problem. The problem is a gospel problem. You know, it is what Christ has done at the cross and what christ did at the cross was to pay for our sins the iconic text in the bible john three sixteen, for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son i want you to take note god loved the world he gave his son the world was in sin it was in darkness the world is a fallen creation but god gave his son from above from heaven jesus is god he became flesh glory to god god gave his son jesus to the world full of sinners pedophiles lesbians gays religious people <laughs> glory to god drunkards anything that you can think of that you can classify and uh, under sin god has already dealt with that Right, he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believes, see, there is the nugget. Whosoever believes in him, in Jesus, should not perish, but should have eternal life. So, what is the gospel? The gospel is the son, it is Jesus, it is what Christ has done. Glory to God. Christ has died on the cross, and he did not stay on the cross. He has been raised. Since he has been raised, you tell the sinner, you believe in Jesus. You're believing in Jesus. You are believing in his death. Glory to God. You're believing in Jesus. You are believing in his resurrection. The moment you say yes to Jesus, you died with him. John 3, 16. Whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Whosoever believes in Jesus, who is the gospel? Jesus is the gospel. Glory to God. Whosoever believes in him should not perish. Should not perish. Should not perish. But should have eternal life. So it's either you have eternal life or you don't. The gospel truth is you have eternal life because you have believed in Jesus. Who is the gospel? Now let's go deeper. Let's borrow Luke 4. Glory to God. Luke 4. Luke 4 from verse 18. This, I want you to take note here what Jesus says. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach the good news. Again, the Holy Spirit anoints people to preach the good news. You see, the good news is not the law. It's not what Moses did. It's not the Ten Commandments. That is not the good news. The Ten Commandments were given for our flesh to discipline our flesh. And guess what? Even Moses 
the channel in which the Ten Commandments came, he did not obey God. He did not enter into the promised land. Glory to God. The moment he came down even to the, uh, from the top of the mountain, the first thing he sees, they had already broken the first commandment. They were worshipping God, dancing around a golden calf. Right? They were worshipping an idol, not God. They were dancing around a golden calf. Right? They disobeyed. So the law is not the gospel. The gospel is the good news of salvation that Jesus has come into the world. That is the gospel. The spirit of the Lord has anointed me to preach the gospel. The word anointed, empowered. He has empowered, he has empowered me to preach the good news to the poor. Now the poor, the, those are the ones that are humble. It's not talking about financial uh, poverty, no. It's talking about meekness, humility, you know, towards what is being preached, that you humble yourself to that message. You can hear that message. Who are those that are poor? Those that don't trust in their own ability. Right? When you are broke even financially, you don't trust in your ability because you have got no, no ability at all. Right? Your ability is to beg. So now when he says he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, it is those that are meek, those that are humble, those that don't trust in their own ability. So now if you are leaning on the law, if you are trusting on the law, that is not the gospel at all. Right? That is your own ability that is your own strength imagine if i can do the 10 commandments all of them why will i need jesus i won't need jesus because if i can love god with all my heart with all my strength with all my power if i can you know look at my neighbor's wife and not covet my neighbor's wife through my own strength if i cannot commit adultery if i cannot steal if i cannot covet the things that belong to my neighbor if i can remember the the sabbath and i keep it holy you know, if I can do all those things, why will I need Jesus? I couldn't. Because then I have obeyed the law. The problem is this. The law was not given to me as the gospel. It was given to me to condemn me. So the good news, why the good news is very important is because salvation no longer comes through obedience of the law. Salvation comes because we have believed in the name of the Son of the living God, Jesus Christ. What's this? The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom. Freedom. I want you to see. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Jesus stops there. If you go back to the account in Isaiah, he says to preach vengeance. The day of vengeance. It continues with the day of vengeance. But when Jesus came, when he died on the cross, when he was raised, glory to God, we are living in a time of grace. It's an open door. There is a time that is coming when this door of grace is shut. When this gospel that we have about Jesus is shut, you know, glory to God. When he that let it is taken away, right? Then that will be a time when people have to rely on their own ability to try and bless God because the Holy Spirit and the church will not be here. Those that have trusted in Jesus Christ will be, have been taken out of the way. Glory to God, right? So it is not a day of vengeance. It is to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. That is Jubilee. Why? Because Jesus is the gospel. He is the one who died at the cross. Listen to what he says in verse 20. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began by saying to them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. This is what Jesus is saying. Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. He says, Isaiah is fulfilled. The gospel to the poor, freedom to those that are oppressed, the year of Jubilee. He says it is fulfilled. Guess what? They did not believe the gospel. Instead, they wanted to throw Jesus off a cliff. That's what many people do at the church. Glory to God. They do not believe the simplicity of the Christian message. Christ has died on the cross. Christ has been raised. See, they try to perform to get what Christ has done. Let me help you out. See, when you receive what Christ did for you, it will change you. It will transform. I used to drink. I started drinking from a young age, age of 13, 14. You know, and it got worse especially when I came to the United Kingdom, it got ways. But when I heard the gospel of Jesus Christ 2004, the Lord changed my life. He transformed my life. Glory to God. I became born again. 
Right, I did not hear about the law. Thou shalt not drink. Thou shalt not do this. Thou shalt not sleep with the prostitute. I heard about Jesus Christ. When I heard about Jesus Christ, my life was transformed. I heard the gospel. So it is the gospel that sets you free. Maybe what you have, you think is the gospel. It is time for you to evaluate. Maybe what you have, it's a wrong message. Get the right message. Then your life will flourish. You are tremendously blessed.